okay, we have Lawrence Devet and, and, and Gopal, Dave Gopal, and they have just beheaded this guana and, and actually making it fit for human consumption. We are taking the carcass of the guana, they are taking the carcass of the guana and actually converting it. Now this corner has recently been caught and it is it's rigor mortis is still is still is still operating here and the animal the animal is is dead but it's the the the, the muscle is still moving in it and as we see that um, Pono is removing the comb right he has just beheaded and the legs the and the the, the head and is now removing the comb as we said before, that they are, they are in the process of converting this guana into meat, the carcass of the guana into meat. The guana is an animal that is permitted to be hunted in Trinidad and Tobago, and it has been so hunted. Once there is a permit to hunt the lizard, it is classified as the lizard and the wildlife act, and it is permitted to be hunted in the open season, which is now. And these guys have recently hunted this guana. They have caught two guanas, and they are in the process of removing, now removing the this big sort of a, a hair-like structure from the back of the guana. That's the first thing. And they are now removing the the skin this guana skin now some people some people actually some people actually cook these guana by not removing the skin and they have different types of um, preparations for this animal the animal has been eaten in Trinidad and Tobago since the long before the days of Columbus and it is very versatile in breeding higher kingdom so you will find birds you will find um, birds and other animals right other animals actually feeding on the young of these guana the population in Trinidad and Tobago the meat eating in the meat eating population in Trinidad and Tobago have been consuming this animals as we said as this animal as we said before Christopher Columbus um, discovered here it was eaten by the Amerindians and today the locals still continue to eat it we still have it in the numbers we still have it in the numbers right it is sustainable and once the guana is protected and not hunted in the close season <laughs> And once it is not hunted in the close season, we would have a constant supply of this animal. So the skin of the guana is now removed. It is it is your the, the slash part of the guana, the, 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 the cut or as as we will want to call it now, is there and the skin is actually prized off the flesh. Right? Now these guanas are not um with eggs at this point in time they are very good for harvesting in that plenty many pop many of our population would have a tendency to look at this animal and even though the animal is filled with eggs they still go and slaughter these animals that is actually interrupting the production cycle of the animal we cannot afford to kill these animals when they are pregnant because the, you can know if a guana is pregnant. So people would have to try to use some restraint when it coming to that. If the animal is bulging a lot, you don't kill it. This animal is almost domesticated. It is living around almost any home. We are having this animal living in towns, right, in, in, right at the University of the West Indies. And some of these savanna areas, you will find this this um, this guana actually living. The guana also lives in the forest. 
but it it lives also in the rural communities in the towns and and in many other places the population at this point in time is very sustainable in Trinidad and Tobago As we are seeing here, the skin is actually prized off the flesh. Um, the skin is a sort of a roughly, a rough, leathery type of material. And it is actually prized off the flesh. Now this corner is actually plentiful in Trinidad and Tobago, as we're saying that it is very sustainable in that it feeds on leaves. And there is an abundance of leaves. Once we keep our trees healthy and the areas they are given permission to, they are given time and um, place to actually lay the eggs in sandy type areas and so on, the population is going to grow rapidly. The other thing about this guana is that we do not have, this guana do not tend to its young as such. You wouldn't find a mother and a whole series of young babies moving around. The babies fend for themselves as long as they are born. The moment they are born, they start to eat leaves and actually develop very rapidly. And they are, as we say, they are eaten by many um, animals, right? Um, out there, they are and, and mostly though by birds. You will find that the um, egret and some of these, um, the snake, the, um, these type of animals, more or less the cannibalistic type um, birds and, and, and eating um, animals that eat small animals would feed on these. So you're looking at here the removal of the skin as you notice that it, sometimes the meat attaches to the skin and has to be prized off by either by your hands. Now many people in Trinidad and Tobago eat this animal. It has been found on the roads, it has been found on the backyard trees, on the cherry trees and all these little orange trees around the home. And it has also been found in the forest. As we are seeing here, we are taking all the skin from around the legs and the skin has to be cut so it could be easily pulled off. This corner is an adult and weighs about three to four pounds, right? It is, um, it is eaten by many a part of the, our population, although some of the people do not right eat this animal they don't know about it as yet but we have a lot of people who eat this animal the people who actually eat the guana is the um more or less from tradition people the parents actually used to eat guana and the children start to eat guana and everybody continue continue down the line friends and son are encouraged and and to eat this animal. Some like it, others don't. The guana seems to, uh, many people are of the view that it is, um, it is something like chicken, because if you have to get something to compare with. If you ask me, I am, I am going to say that the guana tastes like guana. Guana is a, has a unique taste, and we can bring out the taste in guana by the way we cook it. And there are many different ways in which this guana is cooked. As we say, some is actually cooked with the skin, right? That the skin that you are seeing that has been pulled off, right? Some guana is actually cooked with that skin and it tastes all right. But many people have a preference for the guana without the skin saying that it tastes better and it appears to be more clean. So as we said, these guys are actually removing the skin.
Now, if we are looking at this young, the, the smaller guana, it's a female. And we'll notice by the, the sort of a wattles on the, on the back, is smaller in the female than in the male. Now, the cleaning of this guana seems to be a very tedious thing. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience. In that we can't just put it in a plucking machine and just move the skin. We have to be dedicated and actually taking a time in removing that the skin from the guana. So now you have seen the guys have removed the the the, um, the skin, and now they are going about trying to remove the mist. Now the mist in the guana is also is more or less the glands and they operate as filters and what you find is that if they remove those glands these glands are actually strainers in the body actually moving out all the impurities and that has a certain type of taste or something that we call a rank and that has to be removed so we are looking at here they are removing that area they are cutting into that area where these glands would be removed now we are cutting the guana in the center, actually making it, making room for evisceration to where we remove the guts, right? We remove the guts from the animal and all the small entrails and so on inside, right? Actually removing that because it's on, it is not um, edible, right? As you see that it has been removed. All the guts has been removed. You don't eat anything from that? Nothing from inside. You don't need the liver? No. Nah. Alright, so nothing is in from inside the guana is actually eaten. The liver and all these things are removed. And now you have a clean sort of a carcass. Right? You're seeing the viscera there. It's a clean shiny type color. Viscera is actually protecting these guts from attacking the flesh. Nah. The flesh. Now you are about to, to remove the the the, the uh, miss. The miss here, as we said before, are really glands. And you are looking at them here, that they have to be removed in order this guana actually tastes taste clean and not with impurities as we are actually um when the guana was alive, which would have been filtered off by these these um things. Bring it down, bring it down here by your hand. Just now. Okay, so you are seeing the mist there. And that is one of the mist that has been removed. And we are looking at other mist being removed from the um, iguana. From the carcass of the iguana. About how, many, how, how much mist we have to move there, boy? Huh? How much? Two, how much miss? Two. Two? Yeah. Oh, so it's we 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 have two miss that must be removed, and as you see that it is um held by in Dave hand. They have been removed. They they have it removed it already. Lawrence is now. We are removing what? The what? Spinal you, cord. The spinal cord. So you are taking off the spinal cord also. Which will also sort of have the tendency to um, to taint the meat. So the spinal cord has been removed. It it is somewhat similar to the miss there in terms of taste. Of course, we know the spinal cord is responsible for all the the movements of this animal. When the brain interprets the movement, um, it sends a signal to the spinal cord to the different muscles and to the different tissues and so on. Here, in this case, we are about to convert the carcass of, the, of this um, iguana. So we do not need the spinal cord for, for, for sending those messages. It has to be removed because it is going to impact on the teeth. So you've seen that the spinal cord is actually being pulled on and the spinal cord is sort of a tick. We're seeing it there. In a sort of a way, or looking at it there in, in, in um, Dave's hand. So we see in the spinal cord, and we are looking at the 
glands. If we look at the carcass, you will see that the carcass is clean. Yes, yeah, so we are washing the carcass now. We are washing the carcass and actually making it ready for food. Yes, as we say, a lot of people don't eat it. A lot of people do eat it. However, what we can say is those who eat it find it to be very interesting. If you look at the, the, the guts here, lots of leaves, like of leaves. we are actually seeing the lots of leaves and so on that was eaten, right? And if you notice, and some little small fruits like bollum seeds and everything. You're seeing fruits, you, like bollum seeds as we say, and you're seeing leaves and you're seeing all these type of things being eaten by this animal. This animal really feeds on leaves. It is a vegetarian, a type of animal that it actually feeds on, veg on vegetable matter or vegeta vegetable matter. And this is as you see there. That guts there is out for disposal that we can actually go back into the land and fertilize the land. So the vet is actually cutting the corner. You can cut this corner anyhow, right? You can cut it in four pieces so as well as you can cut it in two pieces, you just cut it any type of way that you like, right? And we're going to cut it up here and make it right in small cooking size. You also notice the long tail that is there. The long tail is also very tasty and is actually cut up into small pieces. This corner is actually going, what are you all going to cook with this corner, boy? Curry? Curry. So this is going to be a curry corner and you're going to eat it with what? Yam and Yam. stuff? Curry and yam. So while he is cutting up there, I think Dave has gone to bring the yam. And they are going to get this thing together. And this afternoon, we will have some curry, guana, and yam. I am around here, so I will be waiting to eat. I am one bolusing. <laughs>